for more reaction to the news about John Tory and to talk about her political future, Jennifer Kiesmat joins us. She served as chief city planner of Toronto from 2012 to 2017 and ran as a candidate in the mayoral election in 2018. Uh, now, Jen, thanks. Uh, good to see you. Uh, I mean, this is a difficult situation, and I know... I know that you worked closely for a long time with John Tory, and sometimes you two clashed publicly over ideas. I know you tweeted last night that this was a lot to process. Have you processed what's happened here in Toronto? Look, I don't think anyone in the city has processed this yet. This is a sudden change directly following an election, so that's very tricky. Uh, but what it does mean is that we're suddenly in a moment where we have an opportunity to do the thing we didn't do in the last election, which is have a big conversation about the future of this city and the very real issues, the very pressing issues that are really upending the city, whether that's access to housing that everyone can afford, whether that is, you know, fixing this boondoggle, which is, you know, just sucking up tons of money, which is the Gardner Expressway, or addressing the issues that we have with public safety, particularly getting people on the TTC and ensuring that the TTC is safe. So we have an opportunity to have a debate about those issues. We didn't do that because we had an incumbent that really, you know, name recognition is pretty powerful and no one felt that they could uh, take on that mantle in a really significant way. But some really great candidates are lining up and having conversations right now behind closed mm -hmm. doors about the opportunity to transform the city. And you know what question comes next. Are you planning on running for mayor of Toronto? Well, you know, um, I'd love to be mayor of Toronto because I think it's a really important job. And uh, it's, it's a job where, if it's done right, it can really shift the trajectory of the city. But the truth of the matter is, like many other people, this caught me off guard. And I am deeply embedded in my company focused on building housing. We have a tremendous amount of work that our team is doing to deliver housing in the city of Toronto. I couldn't be more passionate about what I'm doing, and I'm going to stick to that course. Okay, so just to just to confirm here, uh, you're announcing that you will not be running for mayor of Toronto in the next election. Look, I'm not making any announcement because I think it would be an I, the announcement would be if I'm running, I'm not running. I never so, so suggested that I was running. <laughs> okay. No, it's not possible. No, it's not possible. Not, okay. It's not something that I'm contemplated, contemplating. Absolutely right. not. I saw you tweeted as we were getting connected with you that there are a lot of interesting names popping up today. Are you going to be backing a certain candidate? Is there one that you have your eye on right now that you could say that would be a great mayor of Toronto? Well, the interesting thing is that there's folks at the provincial level, um, some names that are coming up, but there's also some existing councillor whose names are popping up and also some people who have been councillors in the past. You'll recall that we had the unprecedented situation at the end of last term where we had people like Joe Cressy and Mike Layton and Anna Bailau who resigned from council and were, you know, their names have been thrown away or thrown around as people who are waiting in the wings. But there's also some people on council who are interested. You mentioned that you've been talking to Josh Matlow. Then we also know that there's some people who, you know, like Mike Ford, who has gone up to the provincial level, but has that experience. And of course, uh, has quite a bit of support at the provincial level in the event that he's considering running. So there's a lot of names being thrown around. And then, of course, all of the, the people who ran in the race last time, Chloe Brown was a very interesting candidate, as is Gail Penalosa. So, look, the great thing is we're a big city with lots of talent and lots of people that are bringing a different perspective to how they would govern. Yeah, there, there's certainly, a, you know, it was a wide range of names being thrown about right now. But if the field is too wide, particularly when it comes to progressive candidates, do you think that vote splitting could be a factor here? And are, are you concerned about that potentially? Well, look, absolutely. The risk is that we have, you know, one too many good candidates and that splits the vote. We have to see what happens over the course of the next day. This is a shock for everyone. Uh, a lot of people who've been waiting in the wings are suddenly activating their advisory panels. They're having conversations with their key advisors to see if this is the right moment. There's probably some negotiating going on behind the scenes between those candidates to ensure that that vote splitting will not happen. happen some negotiating, some bargaining. So we're going to have to see how things unfold over the course of the next week to really get a sense of whether... Uh, the candidate pool is going to be as wide and robust as it seems at this moment. There will be a narrowing. I, I heard, uh, you know, uh, a, 
a lot of talk today about whether or not the mayor made the right decision. Some people believe that he definitely should have stepped down uh, after admitting to this affair with a former staffer. Some people say this is the wrong time for him to do that. I know that you have said that, you know, the city is dealing with so much right now. Do you think that he made the right decision to step aside? Honestly, I don't think there's any value in backcasting. The decision's been made. We are where we are. Now we have to ask the question, uh, what does the future look like? What are our key priorities? And who is going to be the leader who will take the helm with these strong mayor powers into the future in light of the fact, fact that he has stepped down? Like, there's kind of, there's no point in my mind right. in litigating that. I'm completely laser focused on ensuring that we're having the right conversation about the future of the city and that we're you know attracting some great people into this role this is this is not just an important role for toronto it's important for the province it's important for the entire country and, and jen i gotta let you go here because i'm getting the wrap but i just do want to sneak one last one in here you said that you're not interested in the mayor's job right now would you be interested in coming back potentially as uh in, in some role city planner uh a, for the new administration? Look, um, you know, I served for five years. I'm very proud of the level of effort, the things that I achieved in that time. And I'm serving in a different capacity right now. I'm creating one of the largest development companies in the city that has a real priority mm -hmm. around uh, affordable housing. And I think that couldn't be a more important place for my efforts to be focused today so i'm laser focused on that and i've got a great team and we've got a ton of work to do so i can't quite get my head there all right jen appreciate the time uh, and the perspective and the insight this afternoon that is jennifer keysmap who served as chief city planner of toronto from 2012 to 2017 and was a mayoral candidate in 2018 she joined us from toronto